हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ बींग ए सी सी ए दिस इज दुषिता गुप्ता ए सी सी एफ एलिएट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू बी सॉल्विंग सिप कंपनी सिप कंपनी स्पेशलाइज इन रीफर्बिशिंग द इन साइड ऑफ यॉट्स एंड हैज़ बीन आज टू कोट ऑन अ रेलिवेंट कॉस्ट बेसिस फॉर द रीफर्बिशमेंट ऑफ अ यार्ड कॉल्ड बो द रीफर्बिशमेंट विल स्टार्ट इन वन वीक्स टाइम सिप कंपनी हैज बीन हैज स्पेंट हंड्रेड डॉलर्स ऑप्टेनिंग द फॉलोइंग इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द रीफर्बिशमेंट दीज आर द materials the material required will be 20 meter square of upholstery fabric 10 meter square of teak wood for the flooring the cheapest source for the upholstery fabric would be from an overseas supplier at a cost of okay so these are the details that are given to us we can come back to these later non current assets a new kitchen will be required so this is about the kitchen this is about the labor we have two types of labor skilled and unskilled labor the first paragraph talks us about the skilled labor and the second tells us about the unskilled labor then there are some other costs also given to us it is factory policy to add 2200 per week to a project for the duration of the project this is to cover factory rates depreciation interest on long term loan to purchase plant and equipment and some profit element so let's read the first requirement the first requirement says what are the costs to be included in the quote for the upholstery fabric and the kitchen so let's first read the uh, paragraph about the upholstery fabric so we need 20 meter square of this upholstery fabric right the cheapest source for the upholstery fabric would be from an overseas supplier at a cost of 85 डॉलर्स पर मीटर स्क्वायर सिप कंपनी बाइज मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स फैब्रिक फ्रॉम ओवरसीज एंड पेज फोर हंड्रेड पर मंथ टू अ शिपिंग कंपनी एज अ रिटेनर एंड देन सेवन पॉइंट फाइव पर मीटर स्क्वायर फॉर ईच मीटर ट्रांसपोर्टेड सो दैट मीन्स वॉट विल बी द कॉस्ट फॉर दिस अप होल स्ट्री फैब्रिक दिस विल बी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द प्राइस ऑफ द प्राइस पर मीटर स्क्वायर दैट वी पे सो दिस इज एटी फाइव so 85 plus 85 multiplied by 20 meter square because that is the amount of uh, upholstery fabric that we required and then we are also paying 7.5 per meter that is being transported so this is 7.5 multiplied by 20 and why are we not taking the 400 element because this will be paid even if nothing is transported and even if we are transporting uh, the material for us so uh, this is a retainer and will be paid regardless so this is not a relevant cost so this comes out to be the total that we will quote for the upholstery so i will write 1850 over here so this will be 1850 moving on to the kitchen let's find out uh, what is the thing for kitchen um let's read the information yes this paragraph talks about the kitchen so let's see a new kitchen will be required this can be purchased for 4500 and the fitting costs will be 2000 so if we go for a new kitchen new kitchen will cost us how much uh 4500 plus 2000 so this will be the cost if we take a new kitchen alternatively the existing kitchen can be refurbished the materials for refurbishment will cost 4000 and 40 hours of semi skilled labor will be employed specifically for the refurbishment at a cost of 15 dollars per hour now the fitting cost of the refurbished kitchen will be 10% less than the new kitchen so let's find out if we refurbish the existing kitchen so what will be the cost so first of all 4000 is the materials and then i'm going to need 40 hours of semi skilled labor who are paid at 15 per hour and then i will add uh, the fitting cost which is 10% less than the new kitchen fitting cost for my new kitchen was 2000 and 10% less would be 90% of this amount right so if i add this up i will get 6400 so which is cheaper refurbishing the older kitchen is cheaper so i am going to quote 6400 for this i will add a text box over here and write 6400 right so let's move on to the second one now what cost should be included in the quote for the teak wood now let's find out where does it talk about the teak wood okay here we require 10 meter square of the teak wood 
then let's see uh, what uh, information do we have about the teak wood sip company has 5 meter square of teak wood in inventory which cost 100 dollars uh, per meter square and this could be sold at 5% discount uh, on original cost this teak is left from a previous job and is stained dark mahogany the color on the stain is uh, of the stain required for bow tan is lighter and the cost of sanding and staining the teak are these many okay sanding is this much staining is this much reset of the staining machine arising after each staining job is com uh, completed dollar 80 okay so to ensure that the color of the teak is consistent all the teak for one job is stained at the same time and the staining cost is the same irrespective of the age of the teak the cost of purchasing new teak is 110 new teak can be stained the correct color for bow with no preparation okay so this is the second question um first of all in this we will have to include the cost for both sanding staining and whatever the reset that will cost us so here we are talking about the teak first of all our requirement is 10 and let's see we have an inventory 5 so um this is uh, actually cheaper than the cost of new teak which is 110 so for the old one i will say that my cost is um 95 because this can be sold at a 5% discount so it cost me 100 but now this the value of this is 95 minus 5% from uh, 100 so 95 and plus uh what will cost me for sanding so 95 plus 14 will uh, will be for the existing uh, wood that i already have in my inventory so this one component is this and then i have uh, the new teak which i will have to purchase i require 10 i have 5 in inventory that means i will have to purchase 5 more and the cost of the new teak is 110 so uh, this is one of the components and then let's see how much it will cost us to stain all of this teak so it is mentioned that uh, to ensure that the color is consistent all the teak will be stained at one time so all the teak is 10 meter and then we will uh, for staining it is 4.5 per meter square so this is 10 multiplied by 4.5 so this is what will cost me for staining this teak and then i will reset the cost of including reset is 80 and then the sum of these will give me how much i need to coat for the teak so the sum of this comes out to be 1220 and this is what i will coat for my teak this is my answer okay now what cost should be included in the coat for skilled and unskilled labor let's find out uh this paragraph talks about skilled labor and the next one talks about unskilled labor this is the third question uh now let's first find out for skilled labor right uh skilled labor is paid the market rate of 25 per hour and is currently fully employed on another job where they earn a contribution of 6 dollars per hour alternatively new skilled labor could be employed but the new workers would require a training at a cost of 14 dollar per hour for the first 10 hours that they are working so let's first find out uh, what each of these alternatives will cost and then we'll go for the lower one so for the existing labor we are paying them 25 and we will be losing a contribution of 6 so this means 25 plus 6 is my cost if i employ them on this project and then they will be uh, how many hours there will be 100 hours so this is my cost if i use my existing labor let me label this over here this is for existing labor now let's find out if i hire new labor if i hire new labor first of all i will have to pay them 100 hours multiplied by the market rate which is uh, 25 and then i will have to incur 14 dollar per hour for 10 hours of training so this is my new cost so what what will be cheaper the new, uh, hiring new labor and then training them will come out to be cheaper for me so i will go for this i will just mention this over here 
we have our cost as 2640 right moving on to unskilled labor let's read about that unskilled workers are currently paid 12 dollar per hour and each of the five workers is guaranteed a minimum wage of 420 per week each unskilled employee has enough work allocated for them for the next 3 weeks to earn a earn dollar 372 per week the work to be done by the unskilled labor on bo must be completed within the first week of the project starting and overtime is paid at a time and a half so let's read about uh, let's solve about unskilled labor unskilled labor and uh, let's find out uh, first of all how many hours are they guaranteed so they are guaranteed 420 dollars and their per hour rate is 12 so this means they are guaranteed a work for 35 hours now let's see how many hours are they already working they are already earning 372 which means they are working for how many hours 372 divided by 12 they are working for 31 hours now if i see the idle time that they have is 35 minus 31 which is 4 hours so now uh, I need them to do the work in the first week of the project and I will have to get overtime done if they do not have the time. So I need 56 hours. I have uh 4 hours per worker left. So um 4 hours if I do uh, there are 5 workers, right? So uh I will have to uh, th this is written over here that there are 5 workers. So if I have 4 hours and I have 5 workers, this means I have 20 hours but how many do i need i need 56 hours so this means that the balance 56 minus 20 i will have to pay them overtime so uh, for the remaining 20 hours that they have idle i do not have to pay them anything because i have already guaranteed them 420 this is something that i will have to pay even if this work was not undertaken now i will have to pay only the that specific amount which they will be working overtime so they will be working overtime for 36 hours and then overtime is said to be paid at a time and half so the time is 12 and time and half will make it 1.5 so this is the additional cost that i will have to incur on my unskilled labor so this comes out to be 648 right now moving to the last uh, second last question which option correctly classifies these costs please tick in the boxes in the table below as appropriate okay so factory rates factory rates can be said as the committed cost because these will be paid even if uh, this contract is not undertaken so these are the committed costs these will have to be undertaken regardless then depreciation depreciation will fall under the category of notional why because depreciation does not involve any actual outflow it is more like an imputed cost so this will fall under notional then let's go for interest interest is taken on uh, the loan uh, which we have taken to purchase plant and equipment this is also a committed cost this will have to be incurred regardless whether we take this project or not then let's go to the fifth question which two of the following statements are true the 100 dollars spent obtaining the cost information should be included in the quote now this statement is false because the 100 dollars spent on obtaining this cost information is a sunk cost and hence this is not relevant moving to the second statement sip company should consider the effect of the refurbishment on the tax the company will pay and include the tax effect in the quote as a relevant cost now this is absolutely correct because uh, maybe due to the refurbishment the tax payments that the company has to pay will increase or decrease so this should also be taken into account because this is a relevant cost and because this will only be incurred if we are taking this project hence this is relevant uh, opportunity costs arise when a scarce resource which has an alternative use in the business is used in a project now this statement is also absolutely correct this is the very definition of opportunity cost it is basically the cost of the next best alternative that you have to forego because your resource is already scarce you cannot put it on both your projects okay now the last statement relevant costing techniques should be used in rel uh, cvp analysis this statement is also wrong so we have our answer as second and third statement with this we have come to an end to this question thank you for watching please stay tuned for the next one